over this week they've been getting some good bites here at Scottsboro. Mainly at night though. So we thought we'll come over the high tide, just have a couple of throws, but the weather changed quite a bit. It's a bit of a almost a southeaster, which is not a preferred wind. That's blowing, but we we yeah came all the way, so must have a throw. Now, uh, as you guys know, Scottsboro is quite a popular fishing area. In the sardine run, sods normally beach here as well sometimes, or the guys net them out here, like they did last year. And uh, yeah, by the pool, we had the tidal pool to the left of rocks here is the famous fishing spot for bigger spot uh, for bigger fish shad. Um, shad here to the left and from the beaches, and then your grey sharks, flatfish, pretty much everything come off here, and they occasionally hook a tuna here, spinning side of things here is good, um, if the conditions are right. But yeah, we're going to put a, a little bait out. Got the Grand Elite, Saltus 8000. On this I've got Cobra Braid, 40, 48 pounds. And then I'm using a 150 pound J Braid leader. Um, the Grand Elite 15 foot comes with the cast clips. And that's it. I'm going to put bait on. Just so run you through the chase. I guys, to put my chase on, I do a, a polymer knot. And I've got the power combi swivels, that's the double swivel. One for your sinker line and the bigger main one going down to your hook. I'm fishing a bite trace with a 49 strand American fishing wire surflon. On my bite, bite trace, the monofilament I'm using above the, the steel, that's a 0.80. I'm going to opt for a 6 ounce sinker. My dangle. 6 ounce. I just bend them out slightly. I'm talking to you guys with a dangle in my mouth. And then just a piece of foam for my dangle. Now this I do to actually have something to hold the bait nicely on the dangle. I've cut a slit where the cable can go in and yeah I'm going to lock it. That's why I took out the Kingfisher cotton. The latex is thicker than the other one I've got here. That we do need to tie properly. I'm first going to do a cutlet bait. I'm going to build a bit of meat in the bottom. And then I want to add my chocker to tie onto that. Check the chocker from Ed Canberra and they still look alive. Look at that. Did you hear that? Actually still made noises. Probably is still a little alive. Uh, more visual bait because the water is so clean I want the fish to, to want to eat this just based on the visual I want to put some sardine flavor on there I'm doing that specifically for a bit of belly shine and the sardine smell not a big bait guys I want to try First, see what's around. If those grey sharks are around, they're not going to leave this. But I also want to see if there's maybe something else in the water. So I don't want to make the bait too big. And I make my tentacles of the chocker so that there's right there by the dangle. I'm going to be flicking around like that. Let's go put this in the water and see. Ready to go. Look at that. Could be shared. Maybe I must put a skeleton hook on. <laughs> right guys, what I do, you'll see I make the drag loose because I'm fishing a circle loop. <coughs> Sometimes the smaller grey sharks and even your smaller sandies. They'll pick you up so fast 
that you don't have time to go forward fast enough and all of that and you're standing on the rocks in any case. So you keep your drag loose so if they take off they can take line and you just you just tighten up on it and start reeling the hook on and that's how we do it with the circle hooks. I'm happier with that one. The first cast I didn't put too far I just put it by that reef obviously exposing it to a lot of peckers and uh, smaller toothy critters. Now I went a bit more to the left I don't see much reef there in the water and uh, quite a bit further so we'll see if we can pick up something interesting there. Putting it out there. So if there's a sandy or something interested in it. The grey sharks more. They're coming in abundance at, in the evenings. But in daytime you still have a chance of uh, the odd grey shark, but more, more likely a sandy or a flatty. So I put just mackerel on now. There weren't too many peckers, you can feel them. So should they hit this? If you cast a bit more to the right where those reefs are, there yeah, I wouldn't put just a mackerel, I think it'll be off too quick. Grey shark, they can come thick here, cost for cost. And uh, a nice alternative while waiting for a sandy or something bigger. They still fight nicely. All right, now when you're releasing them, like in this, this circumstance, as you wait for a nice big wave to come up. So if they land in water, then they don't get hurt and they go out with the water. If you can get down, obviously it's a better way to release them. But when the water is still high, it's really high. You wait for the wave to push up nicely, you put them into the wave. use of it. I think I've only got two mackerel left. But we'll see. All right this has been out for sure probably an hour. Not a bite after that grey. Dead 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 so I have to check, check my bait. Just now I'm standing with no bait. There was peckers I didn't feel. And because uh, now it's nice time we should be getting bites. If there was one grey there should be more as it gets later. But the tide is also pulling back. I think it's about uh, seven o'clock low so it's probably in the middle now you can do with a new bait but it wasn't gone but we'll put a fresh bait and I think I've only got one mackerel left so we'll try that guys now 
This has become a very handy tool in my tackle bag for years now. Those little mustard scissors. You do get those big bait scissors and it comes down to preference. It's a very nice scissor, the, the big bait scissors from mustard. But I prefer the small one, it's good enough. And it doesn't take a lot of space, doesn't weigh, <laughs> try and keep this bag as light as possible with all the walking. But it's uh, with the cotton and getting your bait off quicker, scissors is essential. And that's the Aito, Aito Tuna Circle from Mustard. The perfect little hook for this type of fishing. You can catch a big sandy on it, you can catch big skates on it, but you can also get the smaller grey sharks. And any fish with a mouth big enough to swallow that, or swallow your bait. It's a nice general size for, for bait fishing. Nice little fresh mackerel. The time of the day is much better now. So the odds are much better in getting a bite. I think we should get a, at least another grey. We're lucky as Sandy, but I think they just, they went off. Um, the reason I'm saying sandy is earlier this week, two, three days ago, two nights in a row, the guys got a lot of those smaller sandies, some bigger fish they hooked, some, uh, some fish <laughs> kept them busy for two and a half hours and they lost it. So they are in the area and uh, those big thorn tails this time of the year as well. So any one of those fish can possibly pick it up. Our pets in the pools guys put your bait that you cut off take it off the rocks because it looks horrible it stinks it smells but put it in the pools for the crabs and the and the little fish that live in the pools or dump it in the sea four hours we were here one gray bite unfortunately I have to pack up now I felt peckers now in any case but uh, if you have to put it out now into the dark yeah I'm sure you'll get some fish swell is nice and low it's about a meter one and a half meters see it's nice it's really nice but uh, I think you need uh, you need a bit of darkness here to get the fish to come in it's not a great day's fishing but it's an awesome day's work 